Turn to page 139, page 139, I know whom I have believed. Amen. We'll sing verse 1, 2, and 5. <laughs>
please remain standing for a word of prayer. Brother Jerry Richardson, would you come up and pray for us this morning, please? So let's pray together. Father, as we come to your throne again this morning, in the name of the Lord Jesus, thankful, Lord, for another opportunity to come together to thy house to worship you in spirit and in truth. Pray, Father, that you would have your way in every song that's sung. Prepare every heart to receive the word, and Lord, may it touch the hearts and draw especially lost souls to you. We we'll give you the Please. glory and the praise and the honor for all that's done. We ask it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Jerry. You may be seated. Choir may be seated as well. We're delighted you're here today on this special day. As preacher would say, the best day of the year, Father's Day. But he's not here today. Uh, he and Miss Walls are out and about on a trip with about 20 other of our church members, uh, of our church family. And uh, you be sure and pray for them as they'll be gone this week. Pray the Lord give them a good time as they're away and bring them back safely. Uh, they'll be back, Lord willing, next Sunday. But be sure and pray for them. For them. We're glad you're here, though. Thank you for coming and being part of the service here at Mount Pisgah Baptist Church. Maybe you're visiting for the very first time or the first time in a long time. If that's the case, you're our special guest today. We have a, a uh, gift for you. We also have a visitor's card and an ink pen. And we ask that you take just a moment and fill out the visitor's card. Drop it in the offering plate when we we'll receive the offering here in just a little bit. That way we'll have a record of your attendance here today. So we'd like to recognize those that are visiting for the first time or the first time in a long time. If that's the case, would you just simply hold your hand way up high and let our ushers get to you this morning. I have some folks visiting over here in this section. Thank you so very much for coming. We're glad you're here. All right, some folks here, Brother Ronnie. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Archie. All right. Right here. Thank you, Brother Ronnie. Brother Bruce, if we miss anyone, wave at us, and we'll be sure to get to you. We're glad you're here. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. All right, all fathers, all fathers. We're going to recognize the fathers here in just a few moments. But if you were not in Sunday school this morning, fathers, if you were not in Sunday school this morning, uh, we would like to give you a card so that you could write your name on it. That's all you need to write is your name. We're going to have a drawing for some gifts here at the end of the service, but we want to make sure all fathers get their name in the basket. So if you did not receive a card and put your name on it during Sunday school, and you're here this morning as a father, we'd like to give you a card so you can write your name on it and then drop that in the offering plate here in just a little bit. Our, our ushers are in the back. They're going to be making their way to the front. So if you did not write your name, fathers, if you did not write your name on a card during Sunday school, if you'll raise your hand way up high and just hold it up high until our ushers can get you a card, then we ask that you write your name on it, okay? So just hold your hands up just for a few moments. This will take a minute to do that, but we're going to make sure we get a card to every father. All right. Would not want to miss the special big gift that we're going to be giving away at the end of the service. You don't want to miss that one, all right? Hold your hands way up high, fathers. We'll get to you. We're about halfway down the auditorium now. Thank you, ushers, for your help. Thank you so very much for your help today. I appreciate it. Okay? How about in the choir? We've got some in the choir, Brother Ronnie, Brother Bruce, Brother Robert, any in this side over here? All choir members, fathers, choir members, did not get a card during Sunday school. All right, did we get everyone? If we didn't, raise your hand way up high. Fathers, did you get a card? Did every father get a card? Be sure and put your name on it. Now then, if you don't have a pen, you'll have to borrow one from your neighbor. Brother David Gambrell has a few. All right. He told me this morning didn't have very many, but if you need a pen, raise your hand way up high, and our ushers will bring a pen to you. If not, you can borrow one from your neighbor, okay? Did every father get a card now? All right, you're supposed to write your name on that, drop it in the offering plate here in just a few minutes. We'll take and put all the names of all the fathers here this morning in a basket, and we'll have a drawing here in just a little while. All right, good deal. 
Let me remind you about the green prayer request cards in the songbook rack in front of you. If you have a special prayer request that you'd like for us to pray with you about, write that request down, drop it in the offering plate, and we'll compile a prayer list so you can pick up on your way out and you can take and pray for the special needs that have been written down. Also, there is a yellow visitation request card in the songbook rack in front of you. If you know someone that you'd like for us to visit this week, write their name and address down. And we'll do our best to see them this week. All right, I think that's about everything that I need to take care of at this time. Right now, Brother Harvey's going to come and lead the choir. And the choir is going to be singing one of my favorites, Oh, I Want to See Him. And again, turn to page 364. 364, Standing on the Promises. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. Standing on the Promises. Standing on the promises of Christ my King. Oh 
are playing for us. The choir is coming down. We'd like for you to turn around and shake hands with those around you. Fellowship one with the other if you would please. Bless you, brother. you so very much ladies if our men will come we'll receive the offering at this time so men if you'll come brother leon won't you come on up and ask the lord to bless the offering please our father we are thankful that we can be here this morning thank you for your love and mercy and goodness to us thank you lord for the privilege of prayer yes and lord we thank you for each one that's come this way today I pray, Lord, that you would, as the word goes forth, Lord, that it would not go forth void, mm -hmm. but, Lord, that it would penetrate hearts and yes. lives and do its work. Yes. And then, Lord, as we uh, receive this offering, I pray, Lord, that as we give, we give just because we love you. Mm -hmm. And we pray, Lord, that what is given would be pleased, pleasing to you yes. in the way of the stewardship of, of what's given. Lord, we do thank you now and praise you and we love you. Mm -hmm. and we thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Leon. May the Lord bless as we give this morning.
Thank you, ladies. It's at this time in the service that we go to the Lord in prayer on behalf of our, our nation, our national leaders, our uh, local and state leaders, uh, also for our military personnel. So I'm going to invite you to stand to your feet, if you would, please. Brother Harvey, would you please come and pray for us as we pray together this morning? Father, we're grateful to you this morning for the blessings of life, for your goodness to us and to this assembly. And Lord, as we look about us, we look at our uh, news reports and so forth, Lord, we are made to be aware that we need your help in yes, such a time as this. We are grateful and thankful for those who have uh, prepared themselves to go to battle and to preserve this country and preserve our heritage. And Lord, for the safety of having a good place to live and a place, a good place to be. We pray, our Heavenly Father, that you will be with the leadership of our nation, of our states, and of our local assemblies. Yes. Father, that we would honor you always, first and foremost. Father, that our faith will be increased as we see the power in which you perform great miracles. We pray for these men and women in the, on the battlefields today, for all that they have to encounter. Father, for their love for us, for our nation, for our Heavenly Father, we ask that thou would bless them. Meet our needs now, Lord. Help us to honor you and know that you're the only source of help in such an hour as this that will prevail. For Christ's sake we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Harvey. You may be seated. Scripture says this, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Coming to sing just before the message now, a trophy of grace is Miss Wilma Webster. was before then you'd understand why I can't hold back these tears now my life is so different since I gave it to the Lord and I want to give him glory while I'm here, I stand before you knowing that it's only by His grace that I am just what I am today. I'm a trophy of grace, a display of His I'm part of the results from the old rugged cross that was stained with his precious blood. Though I'll never understand why he died in my place, just look at me today because I can say I'm a trophy of grace. There is no way that I can repay His love. And the mercy He showed is more than life to me. There is nothing I can do or say that would be enough. for me my life's a testimony of his mercy his love and his grace and one day I will thank him face to face I'm a trophy of grace a display of his love 
trophy of grace Just look at me today Because I can say I'm a trophy of God's grace Amen Amen We're a trophy of His grace Thank you, Miss Wilma. All right, fathers, all fathers, would you stand to your feet? This is Father's Day, all fathers. I'm going to invite you to stand to your feet. Give them a big hand, if you would, please. Just remain standing. God bless your hearts. God bless you so very much. Now, we're going to have some drawings after the message here in just a little while. And uh, we've got some gifts that the preacher wanted me to be sure and pass out to the uh, all fathers here. So we've got a gift for every father as you exit the auditorium this morning. But we want you to know, man, we appreciate you. May God in heaven help you and bless you once again. And happy Father's Day to you. Now, all of the remaining seated, would you stand? And let's look, Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. No surprises this morning. I'm just going to brag on Jesus a little while. Amen. Speaking of surprises, I heard a little story. Let me tell you about while some of you finished finding Mark chapter 9. I heard about a teacher who taught a group of uh, fourth graders. And she just had a very a very good year and was pleased with all of the students and their efforts and um, last day of school came along and the kids of course were excited about it and they brought gifts to the teacher and of course the teacher knew who they were who their parents were and what their parents did and first little girl she brought her gift up to the teacher and and uh, the teacher knew that her father owned the local florist shop there in town. So the girl handed the teacher her gift, and the teacher looked at it and smiled and held it up and said, I wonder what this could be. Could it be some flowers? And the girl smiled real big, and the teacher opened it up, and sure enough, it was some flowers. Next little boy came up, and he, give, he gave the teacher his gift, and the teacher knew that the, uh, the parents of that little boy uh, owned the local chocolate store and the candy store. So the teacher got the gift and she said, could this be a box of chocolates? And the boy smiled real big and she opened it up and sure enough, it's a box of chocolate. Next little girl in line brought her gift to the teacher and the teacher knew that her father ran the local winery. <laughs> and she noticed that as she held the package up, there was something dripping from the bottom. And she smiled real big, and she took her finger, and she touched the drip and the drop, and she put it to her tongue, and she said, could this be a bottle of wine? And the little girl smiled real big and said, no. Well, by this time, now there was a pretty good drip coming from the box. I mean, one right after the other. So the teacher just kind of took the box over and placed it over her mouth, stuck her tongue out, got a big drink of it, and she said, could it be a bottle of champagne? And the little girl smiled real big and said, No, it's a puppy! <laughs> no surprises this morning here. Just going to brag on Jesus for a little while. Mark chapter 9, verse 14. Mark chapter 9, verse 14. And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them, and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed, and running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribes, What question ye with them? One of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, and he gnasheth with his teeth, and he pineth away. I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. 
He answereth him and saith, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him straightway, the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, how long ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. And oft times it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and rent him sore, and came out of him, and he was as one dead, insomuch that many said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, and lifted him up, and he arose. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for these precious people that are here this morning. Thank you for this special occasion, Father's Day. Thank you for being our great Heavenly Father. And Lord, I do pray that you'll bless now the preaching of your word. I pray that you'll speak through me this morning, this thought that I believe with all of my heart you've laid on my heart for this hour. Bless now. Have your will and way, I pray in Jesus' name with thanksgiving. Amen. You can be seated. When you read through the Bible, you're going to find certain things emphasized over and over again. You will discover that God has established three institutions. You'll see that God has established the home. God has established the church. God has established government. When it comes to the emphasis on the home, we find the word mother mentioned in Scripture some 363 times. But close to 1,500 times we find the word father. God has a message for fathers. Now, this is not a message given over entirely for fathers, so... I want to encourage each and all to listen carefully this morning and pay close attention, but especially fathers. General Douglas MacArthur said, a true, he said, when I, when, when I am gone, I, I, want people to be, I want people to remember me not as a great general, but as a Christian father who read the Bible and prayed with his children. Now, a noble ambition indeed. And dads do hold undeniable power and influence in the family, and they are necessary in building strength and character in the impressionable lives of their young ones. According to a Gallup poll on fatherhood, nearly 80% of respondents said the most significant family or social problem facing American people today is the physical absence of the father from the home. Now, according to the survey, they said a lot of dads are just not home anymore. Whether it be because of travel, whether it be because of work demands, whether it be because of a hectic lifestyle, whether it be because divorce, all make it difficult for many men to make a commitment to their family and to make that commitment a priority. The inevitable loss, though, beloved, the inevitable loss of this life in the fast lane is the little guy or girl back home who craves the attention of their father. I'm going to tell you something that might startle you just a little bit this morning. Not many things startle us anymore. When we heard Tuesday of the capture of Paul Johnson, we heard what the militant Muslim group that was holding him uh, requested, the release of Al-Qaeda prisoners, or they were going to execute him. Then Friday morning, my heart went out, or Friday afternoon, my heart went out when I heard that they had carried out their execution. Not many things startle us anymore, but maybe this will startle you just a little bit this morning. A recent survey conducted through the National Center for Fathering shows that almost 40% of all children live in households that include their biological mothers, 
but not their biological fathers. Now, I don't think that's what God had in mind when he established the home, do you? Of the three institutions that God established, the home, the church, and the government, I feel like the home is the most important because it's the oldest of the institutions that God established. As a matter of fact, as goes the home, so goes the church, and as goes the church, so goes the nation. It all goes back to the home. Now, no doubt about it, we need strong Christian homes today. Uh, a, a Christian home should be a place of strength, and it should be a place of refuge. It should also be a place of evangelism. It should be a place of prayer, just to name a few things that a Christian home should be. We need good, strong Christian homes in our land today. And fathers must lead the way. Christian dads are one of the hopes that this old sin-sick world in which we live is based upon. Now, the fact of the matter is this. In Mark chapter 9, the first part of this chapter, you'll find that the uh, Scripture records for us Jesus on the Mount of, the Trans on Mount of Transfiguration. Here he is. He took Peter, James, and John with him. He went up onto the mountain, and he was transfigured there before them. And while Jesus was on the Mount of Transfiguration, there was a man that brought his son to the disciples. And this son, we know, was demon-possessed. Thinking that the disciples could cast out the demons, this man brought his boy to these disciples. The disciples tried, but they were unsuccessful in trying to cast out the demons. Now then, we get to the passage of Scripture this morning that I want to focus our attention on just for a few minutes. And I promise you, it'll be just for a few minutes. Three tremendous truths I want to point out to you today as we look at this portion of Scripture. The first thing I want you to notice is this, the concern of the Father. Chaos reigned now. The nine disciples who remained behind were down and they were being questioned by the scribes. And all of a sudden this man appeared and he had a boy with him and this boy was demon possessed. And the situation kind of reminds me uh, like the situation that we have here in America today. So many distraught parents looking for help in one place or another. The best place that we can go to find help is none other than in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to notice a phrase here found in verse 17. Master, this man said, I have brought unto thee my son. Now, you would normally think that those would be the words of a mother. You'd normally think that the mother would be more concerned about the son than would be the father. But these are not the words of a mother that we read this morning. They're the words of a father. What in the world do we learn from these words about this man? Do we learn that this man was rich or poor? Not from these words because, ladies and gentlemen, in eternity that won't matter. Uh, we, they, these words don't tell us whether he was a success or a failure in business. In eternity that won't matter. Uh, these words do not tell us whether he was a Methodist or he was a Presbyterian or he was a Baptist. Now, if I had been, written, uh, been writing this, I would have written the fact that he was a Baptist, but it doesn't say that here. As a matter of fact, the Scripture does not even record this father's name. We just understand here's a father that brought his lad to see Jesus and to meet Jesus. This man believed that Jesus Christ was the answer to his problem. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus Christ is still the answer to any problem and every problem that we might have. At that moment, he thought nothing was more important than getting his boy to the Lord Jesus Christ. And oh, folks, beloved, there's nothing more important than bringing a life to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what this man did. He brought his lad to meet Jesus. And notice something here. The desire to help his boy is what brought him to Christ. The desire to help his son brought him to Christ. Now, the man didn't send his son out to find Jesus all by himself. Notice something here. Uh, he didn't drive his son to church, and he said, I understand that Jesus meets there. Uh, you go on to church, drop his son off at church, and then go back home. He didn't say to his wife and the mother of the child, you take our boy to Jesus. He didn't say to a friend or a neighbor, I hear you're going to see Jesus. Would you take my boy to Jesus? He needs Jesus. Now, some of you may not like this this morning, but I feel like I need to tell you the truth. That's where many, many fathers fail in America today. They send their boys and girls out to find Jesus on their own. Fathers ought to lead the way. 
Fathers ought to be the examples in the home. They leave it to chance. We've got some fathers that will sleep in on Sunday morning. We've got some fathers that would rather watch TV. We've got some that uh, don't care if their boys and girls ever get to Jesus. A van will come by their home or a bus will come by their home. And thank God this morning for our bus workers who give of their time to go and pick up boys and girls and bring them to the house of God while the father sits at home. Men in America, they have failed in this respect. They have delegated the responsibility of their children to someone else. I want to say something this morning to Christian parents. I also want to say the same thing to unsaved fathers here this morning. The responsibility of your children does not belong to the wife. It does not belong to the family, nor does it belong to the friends and the neighbors. It, re uh, it belongs to you as a father, and you'll answer to God for it. This father in Mark chapter 9, he brought his son to Jesus every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, every Wednesday night. The father and every father made in the image of God ought to want to get their children to the house of God. Fathers, in the name of our heavenly father, in the name of our country and for the sake of righteousness, I plead with you this morning, at least be as a good father as this father was, this unnamed father in Mark chapter 9, where he brought his children, he brought his son to Jesus. Notice what he said now. He said, Master, I've brought unto thee my son. We see the concern of the father. Second thing I want to point out this morning is the condition of the son. The boy was not able to speak. We read it a few moments ago. We'll not read it again. He was not able to speak or hear. Through demonic power, this boy was experiencing violent convulsions. Now, I don't believe that it was epilepsy, uh, which could be uh, triggered as a result of a brain tumor or a chemical imbalance. Rather, I believe it was an actual case of demon possession here. Here was a boy who was dominated by the devil. Uh, it's a picture of the devil taking control of a life of an individual. And beloved, the devil can take control of a life of an individual. Here is the picture of that in our reading this morning common in the days of the Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus came to this earth, he constantly was confronted by the demon world. And we see that he was constantly casting out those demons and making those people whole. By the way, he does the same thing today. You know that? He, he does the same thing today. He's able to break the chains of sin that bind an individual. He's able to forgive of sin. He's able to write our names down in the Lamb's book of life and give us a wonderful hope of heaven and a wonderful home in heaven when we die. He's doing the same thing today. He's able to set the captives free through the salvation that he offers to you and me. And the Bible says that the devil is the God of this world. As a matter of fact, the Bible also says that this world lies in wickedness. It is a world where the devil is doing his best to destroy human life, men and women who are made in the image of God, but the devil wants to tarnish that image and wants to dull that image. You better believe that the devil wants to get a hold of the lives of your young people. Fathers, you better believe this morning that the devil wants to get a hold of the lives of your sons and daughters. And if you're a parent here this morning, you need to realize that the devil is doing everything in his power to get the control of your child's mind. Because if he can get the mind, he can get the body. And if he can get the body, he's got the child. Sins that used to be the sins of adults are now sins of young people. Did you know that junior high kids today are alcoholics? Did you know today that young teenagers sell drugs? The devil starts to get our, the, our, he wants to get our children's minds while they're young. And he wants to do them harm and he wants to do them evil. It's important for us to win our boys and girls to the Lord Jesus Christ while they're young, get them saved at an early age. I was saved when I came to know the Lord Jesus Christ as an 11 year old boy. And I want to tell you something. Children today, kids today know a lot more than I did when I was 11 years old. We sell our kids short. And if the devil can claim their minds for sin and shame, I think we ought to claim their minds for the cause of the Lord Jesus Christ. We must never, never minimize the value of the teaching of the Word of God in the life of a young person. We must never underestimate the teaching and the value of the teaching of the Word of God. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not willing to let the devil have our children without a fight. Not willing to do it. No, sir. 
Not willing whatsoever. Brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you this morning that I'm not willing for our children just to be turned over to a devil-dominated society without a fight. I pray that the Spirit of God will do a work in their lives and that the Word of God will do a work in their hearts and they will do something good for the cause of Christ. Here's a child whose life now is dominated by the devil and the devil has him in his control. We find this young boy as he's coming to meet the Lord. We find him as the devil throws him down. He, he wallows in the mouth and he's foaming at the mouth and he's pining away or withering away. The scripture says the devil was ruining this boy's life. We have young people who are drug addicts before they get out of grade school. We have kids today who need to be sent to alcoholic and drug treatment facilities before they're ever even old enough to understand about those facilities. The devil doesn't love you. The devil doesn't love people. As a matter of fact, if you were neck deep in quicksand, the devil would be there patting you on the head. The devil doesn't love you. The father in our text, he didn't try to explain away his boy's condition by saying that society had imposed upon him the wrong kind of environment. He called it for what it was. Notice what he said in verse 17. And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. In other words, he's controlled by the devil. But now I want you to drop down to verse 22. And here's what the man says. He says, and oft times it hath cast him into the fire. And beloved, I think in my mind that maybe, just maybe this man can pull his robe back a little bit and he can show the Lord the scars on his hands and his forearms where he's had to go into the fire to rescue his own son. Not only does it say it's cast him into the fire, but notice it's cast him into the waters to destroy him. That's what the devil wants to do with our young people today. Notice what he says here now. But if thou canst do anything, watch how the wording is changed here. It goes from him to us. If thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. It's as if this father was saying to the Lord, it's as if he was saying... My boy and I, we're in this boat together, and if he goes down, I'm going down with him. He said, but if you can do anything, would you have compassion on us? The concern of the father, the condition of the son, but now notice finally this morning, the command of Christ. I want you to see how Jesus took control of the situation here. For the Father, Jesus began to cultivate this man's faith. Notice what he said in verse 19. He said, bring him unto me. I love that, and I believe that's what the Lord says to every father here today, every parent here today. I think the Lord says, you, you bring your children to me. There's an old desperate world out there. You, they, the, the devil is trying to wreck and to ruin their lives and the Lord is standing there and he's saying to each and to all of us, you bring your children to me. Christ says, I'm the solution to the problem. And by the way, he is the answer to every problem that man has. Maybe you've had a disappointing experience with the church. Maybe some Christian has disappointed you. But beloved, I want to tell you something this morning. The Lord Jesus Christ will never disappoint you. There's no disappointment in him. That's why it's so important that we not look at people, but we keep our eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one that will never, ever, ever disappoint you. But now watch how Jesus cultivates this man's faith. First of all, he pointed him to the object of faith. He said, bring him to me. Jesus said, bring him unto me. Now, in verse 22, did you notice this? The man said, if, underline that if there, this is what the man said. He said, if you can do anything. Notice in verse 23, underline this if. Jesus said, if thou canst believe. Obviously, the man had the wrong if here, ladies and gentlemen. It was not if Jesus could do anything, because we know and believe that Jesus can do everything. All power belongs to him, does it not? All power, 
All power belongs to him. He upholds all things by the word of his power. Ladies and gentlemen, he's the one who calmed the storms. He's the one who walked on the water. He's the one that lay, made the lame to walk. He's the one that caused the blind to see. He's the one that caused the deaf to hear. He's the one that raised from the dead back to life the individuals that he came in contact with. He is the one that has all power. The problem's not if Jesus the problem is, if thou canst believe, Jesus solved this man's problem by cultivating, first of all, his faith. Now, notice what happened. He said in verse 25, he said to that evil spirit, he said, come out of him. Now, watch this. The Bible says that the spirit tore him. He fell down as if he were dead. And I love this. Jesus went over in verse 27 to where that boy was, and many thought he was dead. Jesus went over to where he was. And I love this. He took him by the hand. And he lifted him up. Amen. I couldn't help but think about the song from Sinking Sand. He lifted me with tender hand. He lifted me from shades of night to plains of light. Oh, praise his name. He lifted me. And that's what he can do for you today, beloved. He can lift you where you are. Notice here the disciples, they were speechless. Look at verse 28. And when he was coming to the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could not we cast him out? I don't think they wanted to share their embarrassment with the entire multitude was there. So they waited till they got home before they asked the Lord, why couldn't we cast out this demon? Notice the response that Jesus gave them in verse 29. This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. And what Jesus is implying here, I think, is this, is they were neglecting a lifestyle of prayer. Uh, beloved, the reason for our powerlessness is our prayerlessness. The source of power in helping a desperate world does not come from within us. It comes from Him. That's why it's important that we spend time in praying. The way that a church is going to receive power, the way that a person is going to receive power is through the life of prayer. I heard about an illustration some years ago, and I'll share it with you very quickly this morning. There was an organist getting ready to play before the service began, and as he put his hands on the keys, there was no sound, and everyone knew that there was something wrong. So the pastor got up quickly, and he, he went to, to the podium, and he began to lead in prayer. And while he was praying, the maintenance man, realizing that the organ had been unplugged, he went to where the organ was and uh, reached down and plugged the organ up and he wrote a note, a very quick note. He said this, he said, after prayer, the power will be on. And I got to thinking about that, and you know what? There's a lot of truth to that, beloved. That's right, after the power, after the prayer, the power will be on. Mark chapter 9, this man brought his boy to Jesus and this boy was saved. I can't help but believe that the father was saved as well. I'll ask you this morning, is any price too great to pay to have a Christian home and to have your boys and girls turn out right for the cause of Christ? Any price too great to pay? Many years ago, a father drove a team of spirited horses into a town, into a village. And uh, he dropped the lines just for an instant. He started to step into the store that he had parked in front of. And as he did, someone made a noise, frightened the horses. And the horses, in fright, they dashed away and began to run wildly down the street. And this man, with almost superhuman strength, ran as fast as he could, ran as fast as he could and lunged and grabbed hold of the reins of those horses. They dragged him through the rocks and down the road and people were screaming to the man, Turn loose! Turn loose! The horses are not worth it! Turn loose! But the man held on. They would yell, Turn loose! Turn loose! The wagon's not worth it! Turn loose! But the man held on and by and by the wagon stopped. And then he turned loose of the reins and he slumped over. People began to rush to where he was. And they said, why in the world did you do that? Why didn't you just turn loose of the reins? And the man just before 
he died he leaned up on one elbow and pointed to the wagon and someone went to the wagon and there was a blanket and turning the blanket down they saw a little boy on the pallet in the back of the wagon and ladies and gentlemen nobody not one single person wondered why he did it after they saw that little child in the back of that wagon all agreed that the price that he paid was worth it I'm glad to I'm glad this morning and I thank God that my my children not children anymore but I'm glad for the fact that my my kids know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal savior and their heart's desire is to want to do those things that please him I couldn't buy them the latest fashions for them to wear. I couldn't provide for them a, a nice car for them to drive. But I can tell you what Mama and I could provide for them. And that was a Christian home. I hope every father can say, Master, I've brought unto thee my children. I've brought my boys and my girls unto thee. And if you can, you've said it all. I don't know, but maybe you need to come to Jesus yourself today. Maybe you're here and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and the free pardon of sin that he offers. No better time and no better day on this Father's Day, 2004 to come to know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Tomorrow may be too late. Our Father in heaven, thank you so very much. Thank you for these dear folks that are here this morning and that have come to be a part of the special service here at Mount Pisgah Baptist Church. I pray, Lord, that you might do a work in each and all of our hearts at this time. I know it's Father's Day, and I know a special emphasis has been made for fathers. But, Lord, I pray you'll take the message that has been preached this morning that it might take root downward and bear fruit upward in the heart and life of every person here today. I pray you'll please bless this invitation now. Meet each need, I pray, for Christ's sake. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed this morning. and No one's looking around. We're in a prayerful attitude right now. I wonder how many of you could say, Brother Keith, I know for sure that I'm saved. I know Jesus lives in my heart. And Brother Keith, if, if I were to die today, I'm as sure as heaven as if I spent last night there. Brother Keith, I know I'm saved. I'm glad I'm saved. If you can give a testimony to that fact, would you raise your hand way up high all over the auditorium? You know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Amen. What a beautiful sight. Glory to God. You can put your hands down. I wouldn't embarrass anybody here this morning. But I do believe that God hears and answers prayer. I wonder how many of you would say, Brother Keith, I could not raise my hand just a moment ago. I'm not sure heaven's my eternal home, and I'd like for you to be my friend this morning and pray for me. I'm not sure if I were to die that I'd go to be with the Lord in heaven and I'm interested enough in my soul and I'm concerned enough in my soul to ask you to be my friend this morning. Pray for me. If that's you, would you allow me the privilege of praying for you? Would you just simply raise your hand up and down and say, Brother Keith, please pray for me. I'm just not sure that I'm saved. I'm not sure heaven's my eternal home. Pray for me. Lift your hand up. Let, let me pray for you. Would there be any here this morning? I want to speak to fathers just for a moment. Dads, are you, are you leading your family the way that you should? 
Are you being the example and testimony of your family that you should be? Are you taking a stand for the cause of Christ? Are you faithful to do those things that please Him? Let me speak to all the rest of us then this morning. Maybe you're here today and you're just not living where the Lord would want you to live and how the Lord would want you to live. And as a Christian, you'd say, Brother Keith, I'd just like for you to pray for me this morning. I just need you to pray for me. Would you allow me the privilege of praying for you as a Christian? Would you just simply raise your hand up and down and say, Brother Keith, I need you to pray for me today as a Christian. God bless you. 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 Many of us. I'd like for you to stand to your feet, if you would please, as we pray together. Father in heaven, I pray for these dear folks that raised their hands this morning. I thank you for the wonderful testimony. So many here today know for sure heaven's their eternal home. Thank you for that fact. And Father, I do pray if there's one here that didn't raise their hand a minute ago, but they're not sure of their salvation, I pray you'll help them now and deal with their hearts and just help them to know of your love and your mercy and your grace. And Help them to know they're among friends. And Father, I pray you'll, you'll, you'll impress upon their heart the need and the importance of being saved today. And I pray that they would come and allow us to take the Word of God and show them what they can do to get that settled in their heart and their life. And then I pray for Christians, Lord, that raise their hands. I just pray that you'll help and bless now and meet the needs that they have. And I pray that you'll knock down every barrier the devil has set in this invitation. And I pray that you'll help fathers here this morning and mothers and young people today to make a choice to surrender their will to do your will for their lives. Bless this invitation now, I pray in Jesus' name. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed and the ladies are playing softly for us now on the instruments. If you need to come for whatever reason, this altar is open. The invitation has been extended now. Whatever need that you might have, I invite you to come. Certainly, if you're here and you do not know Jesus as your personal Savior, if you'll come, we'll take the Bible and show you what you need to do to get that settled in your heart and your life. Whatever other reason that you might have, and the Holy Spirit of God has put His finger on, his, on your heart and in your life about a particular area in need, I invite you to come. As these are coming, others need to come as well. You come right now. Would you please come? In a prayerful attitude, the ladies are playing for us. Would you come? extend the invitation just a little bit farther before we sing a hymn of invitation maybe you're here and you've been saved but you've never made public your salvation experience I'm going to invite you to come and I'll tell the people why you're coming we'll rejoice with you maybe you've been saved but you've never followed the Lord in believers baptism if you'll come we'll set up a time to take care of that matter the pastor would love to baptize you I'm sure uh, maybe you're here and you've been praying about whether or not to cast your lot and your influence in here with us Become a member of this church and this fellowship. I invite you to come. Whatever the need is that you might have this morning, would you please come. As we sing now, page, what is it, Brother Jack? Page three. Page three. Jesus paid it all. Whatever the need is, if you need to come, would you come right now? I hear the Savior say, I seated. Thank you so very much for coming today. All right, let me just say this before. We're going to get to recognizing fathers here in just a minute, but let me just say this.
to our guests and to our visitors today. Thank you so very much for coming, being part of the service here. I encourage you to come back as you can. Pastor Walls is here. Uh, let me read a card real quick that says, the, the Lord has blessed us with a wonderful church family. Your prayers, calls, cards, flowers, and the delicious food was greatly appreciated. The Lord is good and his grace is abundant. And it's from the family of Frank Brooks, Martha Smith, uh, father, and uh, Brother Chester Brooks, uh, brother. You continue to pray for this family, if you would, please. Now, I just want to say this. Check the bulletin for announcements. Um, there will be choir practice this evening at 530. Choir practice this evening at 530 in preparation for the July 4th program. Prayer rooms at 615, evening service at 630. And no children's choir practice. No children's choir practice uh, this evening. No children's choir practice this evening. And let me see, there was one other thing I was going to, oh, uh, camp news. If you are uh, going to be going to camp, the bulletin says July 27th, but actually that's next Sunday. You'll be going to camp next Sunday, June 27th. All right, I think that's pretty much it as far as I need to announce. Um, the hospital list, let me mention these that I have. Betty Massingale in Park West Hospital, that's Wayne McGee's mother. Uh, Frankie Kelly has been in the hospital. You pray for Miss Kelly. I understand she's making a little progress, which we're thankful for that. Cecil Miller in the Oak Ridge Hospital. Elsie Bowles is there. Pat Gann is home. Uh, Newt Sylvie is there. You be sure and pray for him. UT Hospital, Paul Davis, Jr. St. Mary's Hospital. It says Robert Langford, but I saw Robert here. Good to see you, Robert. God bless you. But you pray for him. And then we express our sympathy to the Phillips family and the home going of Mesa Phillips and also to Inez White and the home going of her brother-in-law, Ray Phillips. So be sure and pray for them. Uh, I was asked to announce that uh, Miss Elaine said that I needed to thank Regina Rutherford for help in Vacation Bible School. So I wanted to do that this morning. And all those that worked in Vacation Bible School, thank you very, very much for your help. All right. There should be more from Sunday school. Does anybody know where the Sunday school names are? They're in there. You put them in. Okay. They're in there. All names. All fathers are in here. That turned them in. Okay. There's a bunch in here. Let me see if I can find some of the gifts here. I have to confess, I forgot one gift in my office. And I, uh, <laughs> I will make sure that the winner of this gift gets it, all right? And it is for the father, the oldest father here. The oldest father here. We want to recognize the oldest father here. I have a gift for you in my office. You forgive me, but I'll make sure you get that. The oldest father here, let's see. Let's start with, uh, let's start with 80. Any father 80 years of age or older? Any father 80 years of age and older? All right, okay, good deal. All right, we've got two or three here. Just remain standing, if you would, please, fellas. If you would, okay, thank you. 85 and older, 85 and older, remain standing. 85 and older, remain standing. If you are 85 and older, remain standing. We have a winner. Isn't that wonderful? How old? 87. Let's give him a big hand. Now, See me after church, okay? I have something for you. I promise I'll get it to you in my office. I apologize I didn't get it here. God bless your heart. All right. Now then, we've got, uh, we've got about 10 gifts that we're going to give away, and we'll do this in a hurry. When your name is called, if you will come, uh, we'll give you a gift this morning that the pastor wanted me to make sure that you got. And then we have one gift that I'm really excited about. We'll give it out here in just a few minutes. Brother Harvey, would you please come 
And uh, if you will draw a name out of there, we will we'll give out the first gift, okay? Thank you very much. The first name is June Nelson. June Nelson. <laughs> Miss June, somebody. That's not your writing? You'll take it? Let me see if I can give it away first, okay? All right. How about Larry Annunziata? Where's Brother Larry at? Where you at, Brother Larry? Come on up front, all right? God bless your heart. Let's get another one, Brother Harvey. While Brother Larry's coming. Brother Tom Townsend. Come on up front, Brother Tom. God bless your heart, Brother Larry. God bless you. God bless your heart. Let's get another one while Brother Tom's coming. How about Leonard Miller? Brother Leonard Miller. Bless you, Brother Tom. And while Brother Leonard's coming, we've got Clifford Melton. Clifford Melton. Bless you, Brother Leonard. God bless your heart. And let's get another one while Brother Clifford's coming. How about Lynn Burge? Brother Lynn Burge, God bless your heart. Bless you, Brother Clifford. God bless you. Brother Lynn, let me get this here. There you go. God bless you. Just one there. <laughs> Brother Lynn wanted both of them. How about Brother Richard Googe? Brother Richard Googe. As Brother Richard's coming, Brother Harvey's already given me another one. How about Brother Bob Carmack? Where's Brother Bob Carmack? Sitting on the back. Come on, Brother Bob. Bless you, Brother Richard. God bless your heart. Robert Deacon. Where's Brother Robert at? Come on, Robert. All right, Brother Harvey. Let me, we've got two coming here. Let me give this Brother Robert right now. God bless your heart, Brother Robert. There you go. Him. Brother Bob, God bless your heart. God bless you. There you go. All right. Then we have Brother Ronnie Crace. Brother Ronnie Crace. And one more. Come on, Brother Ronnie. Come on, Brother Ronnie. One more. Brother Harvey. Jeff Patty. Brother Jeff. In the sound room. Come on, the video room. God bless your heart. Bless you, Brother Ronnie. There you go. Hey, Jill. God bless you. Bless you, Brother Jeff. Bless you. Okay. We'll shake hands first. There we go. Thank you. All right. I'm going to do this now. All of these at one, they're going back in. Brother Harvey, I want you to mix those up very good. We have got a grill set for a lucky father here today. A grill set, complete with all of the uh, utensils. What? And that's not utensils. What do you call it? Yeah, attachments. There you go. <laughs> Brother Jason, can you bring that grill? Where's it at? In the, in the, in the men's baptist room? No, you've got it. Oh, it's yours. <laughs> uh, Let's see here. A grill set with all the attachments. Let's see if I can get this off here. <laughs> I want you to listen to this. Fire me up, it said. We're fixing to fire some father up right now. <laughs> But the real gift is this right here. All right, Brother Harvey, one lucky father. Here we go. <laughs> thing's still going. And the lucky father of the grill set with all the attachments and a $50 gift certificate to Cracker Barrel, Jason Stubbs. Stubby. Thank you, Brother Harvey. Thank you very much.
Congratulations, Jason. Enjoy your grill. And all the attachments that go with it. I have one other thing I need to do real quick. The preacher said, be sure and do this. We need seven or eight men, Brother Nathan, our teenage guys that will help Brother Tom Townsend and David Foster tomorrow to help 